Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV and today I'm bringing you guys a news daily video and in this video today I'm going to be giving you an update on Thomas Tuchel so you definitely can't afford to miss out on that. I'm going to be talking about Antonio Conte and his links with Bayern Munich and to end it off I'm going to be talking about the latest young player we've signed for our academy for next season. But you guys, a few quick things, hit that like button, thank you to everyone that always smashes the like button. Help me get more than 500 likes for this video today. And one more thing as well, hit the bell notification button, you guys, with YouTube and this algorithm and how it's messing things up. A lot of people don't even get the updates when videos are released. It's quite a shame, so it's essential that you press the bell notification button to stay tuned to all things Blue Lines TV. But getting straight into the first part of this video, and that's the update on Thomas Tuchel. Now, you guys, in the last video, I did disclose that there were some things that I couldn't speak about, but in a way, it's already come out from the press. Raphael Honigstein basically broke things down perfectly. Number one, yes, Brina has been impressed with Thomas Tuchel. Number two, the club have been speaking to Tuchel already before the start of the season and this month, uh, around the first week of March. So things are looking very, very optimistic. In regards to Tuchel links with Bayern Munich and Arsenal, you guys need to just ignore all of them. They're all false reports, they're all old, and people are just releasing that to just get clicks from Bayern fans and from Arsenal fans. It's how the industry works. I've already told you guys why Tuchel won't be joining Arsenal next season. You guys watch the previous video to get an understanding of everything I'm talking about. And Tuchel has rejected Bayern Munich. He does want to go abroad and test himself outside the Bundesliga. Now, reports linking Tuchel with Paris Saint-Germain as well. Yes, they are correct. Real Madrid are still in there, but with Real Madrid, really, they're still assessing their options and really just trying to get a feel for who's going to be available for next season. There's still a possible chance that Zidane will still remain at Real Madrid for next year. But anyway, you guys, time for the saucy stuff. Now, you guys, when it comes to our chances of signing Tuchel over Paris Saint-Germain, we do have the advantage. Now, there is one stumbling point, and that's the fact that if we don't get Champions League football for next season, that could really affect things. So far, I have been told that negotiations are around the 70% point. There's still a lot of factors involved in this deal, and getting Champions League football for next season is a priority. Because Tuchel has stated that he wants to join a club that have the chances and possibilities of winning the Champions League. So the game against Spurs this week is going to be massive. But you guys, here's where we have the advantage over Paris Saint-Germain. And the main advantage we do have is that Tuchel does like the Chelsea Academy. Plus, he likes that Chelsea are willing to give him a lot of freedom when it comes to running the club. And by freedom, what I mean is Tuchel is an architect. He is in the Pep Guardiola mold. Tuchel is a, a big advocate of Pep Guardiola. Tuchel likes the possibilities that if he joins Chelsea, he has the chance to mould the club into his own vision. And I have been told that Chelsea are willing to meet those demands because they want a manager to get them to the point where the club want to be at. Finally, you guys, it seems like Chelsea and people at the board level, they want to push through the idea of having an identity and having a culture at the club. And they feel that with Tuchel coming in, that could be the start of things to come. And this new identity that the club do want to push, it's not just down with the footballing side. It's not just with the footballing part, it's also with the club in general, especially in the corporate sides. And that's why the new CEO was brought in, Guy Lawrence. Now, there are more advantages that we do have over Paris Saint-Germain. And we can actually thank Pep Guardiola for that. Now, Tuchel has been out of management for a whole year. He has been on a sabbatical and he has been really honing his skills, learning more about the game and obviously going to different clubs to study their training sessions. Similar to what Pep Guardiola did. And I've been told that Tuchel wants to test himself against Pep Guardiola and against some of the other big managers in this league. And that's one of the main advantages that we do have over Paris Saint-Germain. Tuchel, he's a perfectionist, he's a purist, so he wants to challenge himself against the very best. Now, there's more good news. Chelsea want to make sure that the new manager that they do bring in has a good understanding of the academy because they would like to see some guys finally coming through and making that push into the first team. And as I said already, Tuchel loves the Chelsea academy. And he's aware of the style and how they play as well. He appreciates the style, he appreciates the brains that the players possess, and he appreciates the vast amount of talents that the club do have. And I've been told that Tuchel has been keeping an eye on Chelsea throughout this entire season. Just to bring up another stumbling block, I brought up the first one, and that's the fact that if we don't have Champions League football, that could affect things and our chances in bringing in Tuchel. But there's one more stumbling block. 
and it's not too bad. And this makes quite a lot of sense, especially when you look at Tuchel's past relationship with the sporting director at Dortmund. Like I said, you guys, watch the previous video to get the full depth and understanding of what happened between Minislat and Tuchel. But Tuchel would like to work with the right sporting director. And this is where I'm personally feeling very optimistic because we are trying to bring in Luis Campos. Talks have been happening for a while. You guys have been hearing it on this channel. And I honestly feel that Tuchel and Lewis Campos would work perfectly together, especially because with Lewis Campos, he understands the limitations of his role and he's happy with it. But yeah, just to end this Tuchel report, he's happy and excited at having the possibility of molding a club in his very own image. And it seems like Chelsea will give him the reins when it comes down to that. We just have to make sure that we secure Champions League football. You guys, if we get the win against Spurs, it's time to be very optimistic and positive. Moving into the next story, and that's about Antonio Conte and his links with Bayern Munich. Now, this story has come out from Kicker. Yes, that same paper that claimed that Arsenal were leading the race for Tuchel. And they're stating that Bayern Munich are looking at the possibility of even looking at a foreign manager. This makes a lot of sense. Bayern with the belief that Tuchel was going to be joining them at the end of the season. When they found out that he wasn't going to be doing that, that really messed up a lot of their plans. Now, they're in the hunt to bring in a new manager for next season. But there's one stipulation that the manager needs to have if they want to join Bayern Munich, and that's the fact that they need to be able to speak German. Now, when it comes to Antonio Conte, we already know that it only took him two to three months to learn English and speak fluently. So it wouldn't be too crazy to think that maybe Conte could do the same thing for Bayern Munich. Now, to just give some of my own thoughts and opinions, this does make some sense. Of course, if Bayern Munich were looking for a verbal agreement in terms of who the new manager was going to be to join them for next season, this would make sense to target them right now because number one, it would give a foreign manager especially time to study German. Plus, it gives Bayern Munich time to start planning for next season. Still, Conte still wants the Paris Saint-Germain job. That's the number one job Conte wants. And there's still a chance that could happen. If we do bring in Tuchel and beat Paris Saint-Germain to his signature, I see Conte joining Paris Saint-Germain. Of course, Luis Enrique is in the works. His high wage advance is the main reason why a lot of clubs really aren't getting too involved with it. But you guys, tomorrow, I'm going to be releasing another News Daily video in regards to Antonio Conte and his future. We do know that I'm going to give you guys a story on this contract situation and whether Antonio Conte is going to be sacked or if he's going to leave on his own terms. And the last story for today is that Chelsea have signed 15 year old Jaden Braff from PSV. Now, Jaden Braff is able to play all across the front three, up front and on either wing. We've beat United and Man City to his signature, as well as other clubs such as Bayern Munich and West Ham. Stefano van Delden, his agent, has stated that. They have reached a verbal agreement with Chelsea. And when you reach that verbal agreement, it basically just clarifies the transfer. And Jaden Braff fits the mold of striker we're looking to develop at the club. We signed Redan from Ajax and we signed Fiano Ballo. He's going to be joining for next season as well. And with these young strikers, they all kind of fit that same mold. Similar to like a Kylian Mbappe where they're able to play on the wings. They're able to beat their man. They can play up front as well. They're very multifaceted and I think it's... Very exciting. I mean, when you look at these type of strikers compared to guys like Tammy Abraham and Solanke at the same age, with Solanke and Tammy Abraham, they're more of out and out strikers. But with these guys, they're much more multifaceted in their game. And it's giving you an indication maybe in terms of how Chelsea are looking to develop their young players. Because I see it like this. Imagine when they're 18 or 19 and they're able to leave on loan. They have a much higher chance of having a good loan spell. And why is that? Well, see it like this. One of the major reasons as to why some of the current loan players don't do as well is the fact that they can't play in their natural positions. I'll give you an example, Jeremy Boga. Jeremy Boga's always been a number 10. That's where he's always really played at Chelsea. And the clubs he's gone on loan to, teams like Granada and Birmingham, they use him as an out and out winger and that's not his game at all. So it's no surprise why he's been struggling at times on loan. But with this new breed of striker we're trying to bring up, your Ballows, your Red Dance. It seems the direction is to make them as multifaceted in their game as possible because who knows, let's say in their career, some of them end up becoming wingers, some end up becoming forwards or come to play as number 10s. We keep it flexible enough for them to have a very successful career and I really like this direction we're going into. But anyway, you guys, that's going to end today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Obviously, a big news dump. 
You guys, at 11 p.m., sorry, I've had to change the time for the subscribe recording show. It's going to be at 11 because I've had to add in new information for this video. So I hope to see you guys there. You still have a chance of joining in the community tab in this channel. There's going to be a link to my email address. If you want to be part of the show, send me an email telling me why and what you want to speak about. But anyway, you guys, thank you for watching. Smash that like button. Help me get more than 500 likes. Hit the bell notification button and stay tuned to all things Blue Lions TV. I'm the NEFC. This is Blue Lines TV, signing out.